very good afternoon to you all. A uh, very good afternoon to you all. Uh, today is the 19th of November 2024, and um, I'm doing this live video all the way from South Africa in Cape Town. Uh, if it's your first time to follow me, welcome. If you don't know me, you are new here. Uh, my name is Jean the Blessed. Um, yeah, I'm blessed by God uh, to be helping my generation um, in this moment in time. Uh, if you have been watching my YouTube channel, please continue. You will benefit a lot uh, from, from my channel. And I believe uh, God is using me uh, to help his children um, do what he has planned for them for their future. Okay. Um, so I welcome here today. I welcome here on my channel and it's very hot in the mother city. It's very hot in Cape Town. It's really, really hot. Like it's really, 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 really hot. Um, and today I don't have electricity at my house. Uh, they are doing, uh, ESCOM is doing what planned outage. I don't know what they are maintaining some stuff. I don't know. So I'm using our backup, um, power so i'm on wi-fi but using our backup power but i'm not so sure how long it's gonna last us because we've been using it from 8 a.m and we are going to be using having electricity around 5 p.m my cell phone battery is already running low but we can still charge it but i just said you know what it's not yet my lunch hour but how about i do it now so that i've got even if i don't have battery at least i know i've done this live video so uh today is one of those days like yesterday i promised you to do this video and then i ended up getting swamped some days i plan to do something and then my work overrides everything and yeah so that's what happened yesterday and i promised you i'm gonna do um, a video regarding relocation and what you can do you know what skills are needed out there you know i know a lot of you uh, you really want to go abroad but there is one thing everyone is telling you relocate this one netherlands has opened an opportunity australia has opened an opportunity canada has opened an opportunity but there is one truth they don't tell you and with my experience of helping people, I've helped, like right now, I'm on 370 families. Thank God to the visas that came out this week that I've managed to relocate outside the country with my help. Um, I've realized that when those people move to, to um, different countries ab abroad, whether it's Australia, whether it's Canada, whether it's New Zealand, whether it's the United Kingdom, they all face different challenges. And I feel uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to be open about this. Um, you need to be aware. You need to know before you relocate. So just like here in South Africa, I'll use the example here in South Africa. If you, have, if you are anyone living in South Africa, whether you're a South African citizen, whether you're a foreigner, if you don't have critical skills, yes, you will get a job. Yes, you will work. Yes, you will have a roof over your head. Yes, you will have food, you will have water to bath, but that is all you will have, okay? We have got a lot of people that have relocated to South Africa, from Ghana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Ethiopia, Somalia. There are so many foreigners in South Africa. But let me tell you something. Not everyone is living a good life or the life they dreamt about when they thought of coming to South Africa. That is how it is to many when you relocate abroad. When I say abroad, I'm talking of Australia, I'm talking of Canada, I'm talking of United Kingdom, I'm talking of Ireland, I'm talking of New Zealand. If you move abroad without a critical skill, yes, for example, caregiving is a qualification that can help you to go abroad. But in its nature, it's not a critical skill. It's not a critical skill because it's not a skill that is difficult to get someone who can do it. If you say who has got caregiving certificate, we will see more than 50, 100 people with caregiving certificate. That shows you on its own, it's not a critical skill. If we say how many doctors are here, we might struggle to find a doctor here right now. We will not find a doctor here. That shows you it's a critical skill. If we say, how many engineers are here? Maybe there is one. 
that shows you it's a critical skill. If we say how many in, um, uh, IT engineers are here, coders are here, we might find one or two. That shows you it's a critical skill. So a critical skill is a skill that only few people have it. A number of people have it. And other skills that are not in demand are those skills that everyone has. Business degree, what, 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 what. Those are not critical skills. Yes, it's a qualification, but it's not a critical skill. So I want you at your age, okay, even if you are 40, okay, even if you are 50, you can still acquire a critical skill. You can still find a critical skill and be in demand. So the world we are living in is in need of people with scarce skills, is in need of people with critical skills. And where we are going, not only now, you know, when you look at, we are growing older. When we look at our qualifications, we are looking at the qualifications that will work where we are moving, where AI is in, in demand, AI is being pushed. Everything is going to be AI, it's going to be robots, it's going to be this. Will you still remain relevant? When robots are all over moving, controlling and managing anything, will you still have jobs? In America, we can see there are robots doing waitering. In America, we can see there are robots cooking and cleaning. In America, we can see there are robots doing all different kinds of jobs. Will your job not be replaced by a robot? That's the kind of a question I'm trying to pose to you. If your job can easily be replaced by a robot, in the end, employers will realize that, ah, Instead of having this human moving around in my house, not having privacy, touching everything of mine, I would rather buy a robot. Yes, it's expensive to buy a robot, but it's a once-off pay than paying someone every day that needs to eat, that needs to flush the toilet, waste my water and all that. So where we are moving, you realize that jobs like um, house care jobs, nanny jobs, they are going to be replaced by robots. This is what I'm talking about. What are you going to be doing? So everyone must start thinking, yes, it's not going to be like everything. But where we are moving when we are grandparents and older, this is where we, the world is going to look like. And where do you stand? Right now we are seeing a lot of jobs are being replaced by these robots. So I want you to have skills that allow you to earn good money. Yes, you can say, ah, I don't want to go to back to school. I'm old now. I don't want to go back to school. I understand. I understand. Education is not nice. Education is not easy. It is very difficult. But everything that is good in life is very difficult. If you want anything that is good, it's not easy to get. You need to work hard. You need to push. You need to press hard to get that thing. So today, I just want to leave. I just want to encourage you to desire to have a skill. Not only thinking about who's going to replace me. Don't think about who's going to replace me. Have a skill that allows you to earn more now. A lot of people in the diaspora, my dears, I know. You have to put more hours. You have to slave yourself. You have to work hard to get the mula. Yet there are some people working from the comfort of their homes, in their pajamas, earning times 50 or times 100, of what you earn, whilst working so hard. You know what hates me most in this world is, the people that do a lot of hard work, they are not paid enough. You see how the world is. People that work hard, long hours and harder, they are not paid a lot of money. You work hard, long hours, painful jobs, physical jobs. You don't, you don't earn a lot. Yet someone with a critical skill doesn't work that hard. Use computers, use machines, this and this, comfortably, easily, not straining him, him or herself. For example, a doctor. He will tell you, sister, come here. Uh, caregiver, come here. Can you clean the patient? I need to have a look at the patient. You know as a cleaner, as a caregiver, 
before the doctor arrives, you must make sure that the, the patient is clean. You must remove all the poo, -poo from the patient. Bath the patient. Clean the patient before the doctor arrives. The doctor arrives with his stethoscope. He's educated. Inspects the patient. Write some notes. Nurse, can you give the, the, the patient this um, medication? The nurse comes. Caregiver. Uh, the, the patient has missed uh, him or herself. Can you clean the patient? I need to attend to the patient now. You as a caregiver, it's your job to clean the patient, to make sure the patient is comfortable. You remove the poo, poo you feed the patient, the nurse comes. Good afternoon, sir. I'm going to give you your medicine for today. I'm going to check your high blood pressure. Easy. But the person that does, that takes care of the patient, is the caregiver. The caregiver does all the hard work. Lifting the patient, bathing the patient, removing the poo, -poo removing the stinky stuff. That showed you, I'm giving you a scenario of three, three jobs. A doctor, a nurse, and a caregiver. The one that is at the bottom is a caregiver, followed by the nurse, followed by the doctor. Even in a hospital, I attended private hospital. There are nurses, there are doctors. In private hospital here in South Africa, a nurse's job is to make sure that the patient is, got, is getting all his medication according to what the doctor prescribed. Making sure that the patient is well managed, treatment and everything. But when my son vomits, for example, in a hospital, I ring a bell. Who runs? The caregiver. He runs, she runs. Remove all the vomits. Clean all everything. And the nurse comes and you rush, she runs and reports to the sister. Sister, baby number one is vomiting. Then sister comes, hello mommy, I heard the baby vomited. Let me check, is the fever okay? Is this, this okay? You understand? In private hospital, I'll give you another example. Someone poopoos. Who removes the poopoo? Caregiver. Because that's where you are. You did not go to school. You did not study to make your life better. So that's what you do. Besides the caregiver, she's not at the bottom. There is a cleaner. There comes the cleaner, cleaning all the dirt on the floor and all that and all that. So life gives us opportunities. I see all this and it breaks my heart. Every time I see someone, I always tell them, even someone that works for me, I always tell them, my house is not a place to retire. I don't want anyone to grow old at my house. I want everyone that works for me to improve their life. Let it be just a starting point. But I don't want you to reach 60 years cleaning my house. I don't want that. Clean my house for now, but you set yourself out. I started as a cleaner, earning 800 runs. But I was not content with that. I desired to be better. I desired to be more. Don't settle for doing dirty work for everyone. You will slave yourself. You will do dirty work and work hard until you die. You know, some of the problems our mothers or our parents suffer from is from the hard work they used to do. Working in farms, cleaning houses, and all that and all that. You'll be bending your back. Caregiving, you'll be lifting people. You can't be a caregiver till you die. Desire to be a nurse. You are already in the industry. Go do a diploma in nursing. Do something that will improve. Change from hard work to a job that is better. Change. I know how painful it is because I once cleaned a triple story house. My first job as a domestic worker was working in a triple story house. A big house in one of the most beautiful suburbs in Cape Town called Blobex Trans. Where there's big houses with three stories, glasses, seven bathrooms, toilets, eight toilets, big lounge, big kitchen, 
living rooms, patios, that you have to clean every single day. Making five beds every single day. Dusting, bathing the animal, bathing the dog, bathing the cat, cleaning the swimming pool, weeding the garden every single day. I'm telling you my employer would fume if I would not finish any of those things. From cleaning the swimming pool, weeding the garden, cleaning the house, but washing those bathrooms, you know how big they are. Those that work in houses in South Africa, you know what I'm talking about. Those glass bathrooms that are big like this, you leave it sparkling clean. I'm telling you, and because I used to stay far away in Kailicha, working in Bloberg Strand, you need hours. You take a bus at half past four to go to work. Half past four in the morning. You arrive back home 8 p.m. in the evening. Working that hard. I would sleep in the bus if it's not full. But some days the bus would be full. Which means you'll be standing for three, four hours in traffic. Going back home. You just get home, you are tired. And they don't give you food, enough food. I lost weight. I went there for three horrible weeks, two and a half weeks, but I'll never forget it. I told God I cannot, as I was doing that work, because I had to. That was my starting point in South Africa. I had to. Everybody starts from somewhere. I had to, because I had to survive. I had bills to pay. I had to do that. But I told myself, I cannot die like that. I cannot live working hard like that. I cannot. I improved my, my life. I started adding on the qualifications that I had from Zimbabwe. I started improving myself, looking for skills and opportunities so that I can have an office job, work whilst sitting, comfortable job. And guess what? You start working whilst sitting and you still feel the same pain. But when you look back where you come from, you say, God, I thank you. I used to work while standing. God, I thank you. Yes, now I get tired. But God, I thank you. I used to clean the triple story. I used to wash. If you know the people that we work for when their houses, their chambers in the morning are splashed with poo, -poo. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. When they do number two, they splash. Where there is the food they eat or what, I don't know. And when they mess their chamber, they leave it like that. Or they do it in the morning so that they know you are coming. You are coming and clean. But for me, I use bathroom. I will never leave my poop splashed in the chamber. I take a stick if I miss and clean. But them, they splash the chamber. And they leave it like that. You go to the next bathroom, it's splashed with the poopoo, and you leave it like that. I don't know. The, if it's a woman, you will know when she starts a period, and when she finishes. People who work in houses say amen in comment section. Say that I'm not lying. She will remove her paint with her pad, and you leave it on the floor. She just removes, enter the shower, bath. Where's another one? Strip the pad, throw it on the ground. If it's a tampon, you will find it there. If it's a pad, you will find it there. Until she finishes a period. See in comment section. I'm not lying. That's who they are. They don't care. They are not ashamed. Until she finishes a period, you will be picking all her period pads. You will be wrapping those period pads with blood, with clothes. You will be washing those blood clothes in the shower every single day of your life. I did that job, I can tell you. Until she finishes. If she does a business with her husband in the bedroom, you will see everything. They will leave it for you. You know, as a, as a house worker, today, Mrs. and Boss did it. Yesterday, they did not. They will leave it for you. 
You can read in comment section if you think I'm lying. If it's the paint with the blood, you are the one that's going to remove the paint. Pick the paint, wash it. I did it with these hands. No gloves. My dear, if you are looking for gloves, it's luxury. Many of our relatives, they don't understand life in the diaspora. They don't understand how much the money that is sent to Zimbabwe via Mukuru, the money that is sent to Zambia via Mukuru, how it's end. People do horrible jobs. You do everything for them. Because that's an ordinary job. All you need is to survive. But my sisters, you cannot die like that. You cannot. You cannot. You need to refuse. God, it can't be me. God, I cannot die like this. My life must change. Desire to improve your life. Let me tell you something. Me and some Zimbabweans, we said, you know what, let's go back to school. We applied for school. Enrolled, some went to colleges. Some girls did electricians. Some girls did IT. Some girls did accounting. Some girls did business. Some girls, everyone went back to school. Whilst still doing those dirty jobs. We said, yes, we'll do it. Because we need money for school fees. I'll pick your paint because I need money for school fees. I'll wash your blood because I need money for school fees. I will do it. But I will not do it forever. So do it. Because you need money. But you cannot do it forever. Improve your life. Change your life. Look for a skill. And these are the skills I'm going to be talk talking about. You can change the way you work. You can, not all of us are intellectually blessed. Not all of us are intelligent. God did not give all of us the same brains. You cannot all go to universities. But you can do some courses. If you are currently working as a madumbe now, touching pads and the stuff, you can improve from being a madumbe and becoming a caregiver. You can improve from being a madumbe and becoming a chef. You can send yourself to school, start cooking, do a, become a pastry chef, become a baker, work in restaurants, work in five-star hotels, cook, make nice meals, become an au pair, improve your job. Instead of doing everything, like a domestic worker, improve yourself, specialize in children, specialize in children with disability, become an ECD teacher, do something. Go back to school. They, we are blessed in this world because you can study online. There are so many schools that are offering different opportunities. You can study online. You can be a qualified teacher online. You can be a qualified person that draws blood online. There are other skills you can do. You can't all be caregivers. Because a caregiver on its own is also a painful job. And you can't be a caregiver for life. But you can upgrade if you're a caregiver. Specialize. Especially if you're in the UK. Go and go to school. Train to be a what? People that will draw blood. Specialize in drawing blood. Work for those companies like Pathcare Lancet. Specialize in drawing blood. You just go to patients to draw blood. If you can go to school, do nursing. Improve your life. If you can be a teacher, go to school. Save money. Like I said, everything in this world wants you to save. Save money. Save money. You can save six years of money and send your school to self to Zambia to do nursing. You can afford it. You sacrifice on buying clothes. You see me. How many years have you been seeing me wearing this dress? We keep wearing the same dresses. You know me. I keep changing my same old clothes. It doesn't mean that I don't have money to buy clothes. No. 
have got priorities with my husband and my family. We have got priorities. We have got things that we prioritize on. We have got things that we are doing. We have got things. So buying clothes is not a priority for me. Makeup is not a priority for me. Hair is not a priority for me. I've got my priorities. There will come a point in time when my priorities are done. When I'll be just buying dresses because I've got nothing else to use my money for. But right now I'm going to school. I buy textbooks. Look, I buy textbooks. These are low textbooks. They are expensive. I'm still educating myself. I'm still improving myself. If it means you eat sadza with cabbage, eat sadza with cabbage. If it means eat sadza with mufushkwa, eat sadza with mufushkwa. Heavy priorities. Eating sadza with meat or rice with meat is not a priority. You can save that money for meat. Food is a luxury. The word of God says, "Many shall not live on me on, on, on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth. Many shall, you don't live on clothes. You don't live on makeup. Stop living for people. Stop proving to people. Yes, I'm a, I'm a madumba, but I can dress up. For what? There are people that earn more money than you, CC, but they are improving their lives. You are competing with the clothes. You are a madumba, but you are competing with clothes. You are a madumba, but you are doing competitions with the people that earn a lot. Some people earn a salary that you earn after you, they, you, you, they earn your three years salary in one month. Yet you wanted to prove to those people that you can look good. You are wasting your time, my sister. It's not a time to prove to anyone. You, they don't care about you, those people. Dress up for who? As, as long as you've got clean clothes, as long as you've got washed iron clothes, you are good to go. As long as you are not wearing torn shoes, as long as you are not wearing uh, worn out clothes, you are good to go. Look at me. How many social lights do you see here on Facebook? Every time they do a live video, they are wearing something new. Every day they share pictures on Facebook, they are sharing, they are wearing new clothes, new long hair, new this and that, new makeup. It's them. That's their priority. But that's not me. I'm an example that shows you, you can be on social media with who you are. Look at me, no filter, nothing, no makeup, no lipstick. Am I not earning money on Facebook? I earn more than a lot of people. I earn more than a lot of people on Facebook. As I am. No makeup. No 3D hairstyle. No lipstick. Me. J. So you can do good things. You can be successful. You can be fruitful. And you can do good things as you are. Without looking fancy. You don't need to look high and what. Me, I said, I don't want to look different. I don't want to be afraid or, afraid or to be stressed. I want to go to the mall. I'm going to meet my followers. They're going to say, ha, ah, is, it, is it her? Is it her that we see on Facebook? Look how she looks. No, I'm me. You see this? That's what you see in the street. You meet me in Zimbabwe. That's what you see. The glowing skin, you see it. But you will not see me. I will never. Be put under pressure to wear expensive clothes. To, to show people. For what? To show people for what? Do you help me with money? Do you help me with building my house? You don't. So why should I do things to please people that you, don't, that you might never see? So my sister, be yourself. Focus on your life. Focus on improving your life. Sacrifice money, you and your husband. Whether you start with your husband, if you can afford that your husband do a course, you are doing a good course, do it. If you eat sadza and my virgin in your house, good. Your children must live according to your means. I was talking to another couple, saying, hey, Sissy, I looked at how much they earn. They earn a lot of money. And Sissy, things are not working always, but I said, ha. Huh? Do you know the amount of money you are saying is not enough? Thousands of dollars is not enough for them in Zimbabwe. I'm like, you know what's your problem? You are living in expensive lifestyle. You don't need to live that expensive lifestyle. Downgrade. My dear, 
If you are one of those people who is saying my money is not enough, I don't have money to school, but you are living an expensive lifestyle, downgrade. Downgrade and develop yourself. Downgrade and improve your life. Downgrade and improve your life. Stop trying to impress people. Go to school. Your husband can do plumbing. Even you as a woman can do plumbing. Let me tell you something. They say in this world, if there is a skill that will never be replaced by robots, is plumbing. The whole world is in need of plumbers. Australia is in need of plumbers. Canada is in need of plumbers. America is in need of plumbers. Everywhere they need plumbers. It's a dirty job, but it brings more money. It's a skill you can acquire. Even as a woman. As for me, I don't care where money comes from. As long as I can work and get the money, I'll do it. Fit and tenor, they earn a lot of money. Those people are needed all over the world. Welders, you can do your welding course. Get your certifications. You can work anywhere. You can work in the oil and gas industry. You can work in cruise ships. You can work abroad as a welder. Social work. You can start the party time to be a social worker. Whilst being a madumbe, you can be a qualified social worker. Whilst you are working as a madumbe, you can send yourself to school and become a social worker. You can send yourself to school and become a speech therapist. Speech therapist, social workers are in demand. Australia, Ireland, UK, America, they need social workers. They need a speech therapist. They are critical skills, which you can do. Nursing. So many married women. You are busy showing off with the clothes. You are busy showing off with the lipstick. You are busy showing off with the clothes. Others are sending, saving money. They are going to Zambia to do their nursing diplomas. Whilst you are slaying. Five years from now, those people are earning big money in Australia. We're Naka. Still buying new clothes from, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Runners. And showing off. Those people are building big houses. Those people are building big mansions in Zimbabwe. Where Nake, Dololo, you have got bags of clothes, bags of hair, and a big stomach full of food. Not food, a big stomach full of fat from eating your money. Yes, it's your money. It's what you choose to use your money on that matters. You choose to use your money on food. You choose to use your money on your hair. You choose. So many people, they break my heart. You look at them when they speak, they struggle. Look at the money they are making. A lot of money. Hi, my sister. Go back to school. Send yourself to school. Go learn. One, two, three. Go learn. Develop yourself. Have a good job. You will wear all the clothes you want. You will do all the makeup you want. You will even afford better brands. Because you'll be having a better job. You'll be having a high paying job. And you can do all the things you sacrificed for. You rather eat cabbage now. Than eat cabbage when you're old. You rather wear same clothes every day now. Than wearing rotten clothes when you are old. You rather suffer now. Drink water now. Than drinking fizzy drink now. And drinking fizzy drink when you are old. You know when you are old. Your taste buds start acting funny. That's when you want nice things. And there you are old. Working as a domestic worker. You have nothing to bake yourself on. You have no income coming. Here you are used to eating nice food from madame's house. What are you going to sustain eating in your old age? You wasted your time dressing up, looking good, proving to people. You can still go back to school. Here in South Africa, if you desire, you can write Cambridge. The same a British whatever thing where you wrote your eyelids, you can write your Cambridge. Let me tell you, my sisters and my brothers, 
When we went to school when we were young, form one to form four, school was difficult. Remember, every person's brain continues to grow and develop. When I was form one and form four, my brain was this small. Now, until I'm 60 years old, my brain is still growing. Every human being, your brain continues to grow until you're 60 years old. Which means you become more intelligent. If you struggled with school when you were in high school, it doesn't mean that if you go back to sit for your all level now, you will struggle. You will not because your brain has grown. You have improved and you are becoming more intelligent as you grow older. Until you are 60 years old, you can still go to brain to go back to school. Your brain is at its peak. Right now, our brains are at its peak. From 40 years to 60 years, your brain is at its peak. This, is, this has been proven scientifically, which means every person, as you grow older, you are becoming smarter and smarter. You, you are becoming more and more intelligent. I know a lot of you, you are afraid because you struggled with the form one to form four. You were still young. Now, if you go back to school, you are better. So you can still go back to school and write your O level. You can look. Thank you, Sissy. I never thought of writing Cambridge. And my brother was doing Cambridge in South Africa. You can write Cambridge here in South Africa. Write your O level here in South Africa. Write your A level here in South Africa. In Cambridge, with Cambridge. And you pass. My dear, you can still be the job that you dream of. You can still have the same qualification your boss has. You can still be the same person your boss is today. Go back to school. Your brain is better now. It's not like when you were form one and form four. Now it's much better. When you learn something, you can grasp it better. So even if you failed maths, if you go back to school now, you will pass maths. If you failed English, if you go back to school now, you will pass English. Trust me. Go back to school, write your all level. You will pass. Don't worry about your age. The same school you were writing your IELTS for UK is the same school you write your Cambridge. Cambridge is an international qualification. Some of you are still young. You can even become a doctor. You can be the dream. You can have the dream career that you had. You can still do it. There is no limit. So don't limit yourself. There are so many jobs on critical skills all over the world. Engineering, information technology, doctor, nursing, speech therapist, scanologist, sonographist, those people that take scans, biomedicine, those people that start the blood, those people that start the poop to see what viruses is in there, those people that start the uh, COVID, ETC, biotechnologist, you can start the biomedicine, you can do blood taking, Specialize in taking people's blood. It's a skill. You can become an electrician. Here in South Africa, Jamelin College, can, you can become a, an electrician at the age of 44. You can still go back to school. You can become a mechanic, mechanic, mechanic. You can become a food scientist. You can become a scientist. You can become a plumber. You can become a fit antenna. You can become a welder. You can become a social work. You can become a speech therapist. You can become a psychologist. You can become a nurse. You can become a, 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 carpent, a carpenter. People that work with wood. You can become a sports and fitness. Let me tell you some of the critical skills. Design. You can do 2D and 3D designs. You can make cartoons. You can become a sports and fitness occupation. You know, train people that, that do. There are so many skills. You can become an estimator in finance. You can become an accountant. You can become a specialist. Nowadays, there is social media marketing. There are so many. Animation, doing, making cartoons, drought person. 
so many technicians, media professions, quality and regulatory professions, quality control and planning engineers, quality assurance and regulatory professional, environmental health professionalist. There are so many skills you can do. So many. You can become a midwife and live your dream life. The better job you have, the more money you make, the more opportunities you can go anywhere you want. So my encouragement today is, don't hesitate. If you don't know where to start, come consult with me. Do you know I, I'm busy with the people abroad right now? People with money. That's says, see, Jean, we like your insight. I've got this this much. I can get a bond here in Australia or America. Where can I invest? What business can I do? Don't think you know everything. Don't think you know what's good for you. Come, let, let me help you with career guidance. Tell me who you are, what you like, what you can do. Then I'll guide you, do this career. I'll give you the schools to go to. Whether you want to work and do that, come, let me guide you. Let me help you. You don't know everything. But there are some people that went to school. I can guide you with a career from all level, starting your all level until you finish with your career. I can help you. And your life will never be the same again. Don't you think it's, it's going backwards to do all level? Even if you have got a daughter that is doing all level, you can also do it all your all level. You can go back to school. It's never late. My mother went to, went back to school at 40 years old. 42, she was starting a diploma. But she did a degree. At 60, at, at, at 52, she graduated with a master's at Great Zimbabwe University. Which means if you put your mind to it, you can still do it. You can still go back to school. My mother was in, in university. I was in university. It doesn't matter. Even if your children are in university, you can also go to university. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have transformed your life. What matters is you have improved your life. You can tell your